So I've always been interested in bi biology, chemistry, math, physics, and I enrolled in a lot of competitions, but at TKSI, I learned about genetic engineering and realized that I thought it was such a cool and interesting thing and that I wanted to pursue it even further. So today I'm just going to share some knowledge with you. The entire world is made up of living things, and within every living thing, there's cells. And within every cell, there's genetic information, DNA. DNA is composed of four nucleotides, adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. A connects with T and G binds with C. With C. So if you create long sequences of these nucleotides, you get a chain of DNA. And this is actually the chain for an apple. <laughs> and it got people wondering, what if we could change around people's order of nucleotides? What if we could edit people's genes? Enter the world of gene editing. <sighs> OK. So there are many types of gene editing, and they've been around for a while. There were first talons and zinc finger nucleases. However, these were somewhat ineffective and very costly. However, in 2012, MIT, in conjunction with Harvard and UC Berkeley, created CRISPR-Cas9. It was a really innovative solution that was precise, cheap, and they're currently fighting million-dollar patent battle battles over who really designed it. So I just want to explain how CRISPR-Cas9 works with this really short video. Oh, it's right here. Okay, so with CRISPR-Cas9, you first need a short guide RNA. And this guide RNA, you can program to whatever you want your sequence of nucleotides. This guide RNA connects to Cas9, which is the actual cutter. And it tells the Cas9 where the Cas9 should cut. And off the end of the RNA, Cas9, is another sequence of RNA. So this is after you make your cut, this sequence of RNA will fill in and be the new RNA that's there. So you get your targeted DNA, your guide RNA sequence will match up with your targeted DNA, and your Cas9 will cut. Then the other piece of RNA you, will, you have will go into that location, effectively editing ge the gene that was there in the first place. That's pretty amazing. So, This slide didn't load properly, but that's okay. Um, what are the current uses of this technology? There are a ton. So first, it has cured many diseases already. Sick Kids Lab has already cured muscular dystrophy in mice in Toronto, and a lab in the UK has already cured HIV AIDS in mice. But there are many more implications. Cancer and other diseases can be cured with this technology. Um, they want to create malaria-free mosquitoes. They want to solve the food crisis. And people are even talking about design of babies. These are really big problems that could be solved with the greatness that CRISPR-Cas9 and gene editing brings. So today, I just want to talk about my story and my journey. Oh, this doesn't have the updated slides, but that's okay. So I was really interested in it, and I contacted a whole bunch of labs in Toronto, sick kids, U of T, and I just gave them some recommendations on the articles that I read. What was I to know, though? I was like, I just watched an hour of YouTube videos, but surprisingly, they thought my recommendations were actually quite interesting. And I actually visit Sick Kids Lab now, and they mentor me on gene editing, and I find that pretty cool. I also go to, I'm also planning to go to U of T this summer for CRISPR Cas9 research. Also, last week, I somehow convinced my parents to let me fly all the way to Boston and attend the MIT CRISPR conference. It was super interesting. At MIT, I learned a whole bunch of things. I learned that it doesn't have to be CRISPR-Cas9. You can use different enzymes. You can use C2C2, Cas13 for a variety of different purposes. I learned about how you can use AAVs or biovectors to get your Cas9 edited genes into cells. I learned how to actually implement an experiment with human cell lines, and it was a great experience. So through all these experiences, I decided to come up with my own ideas. And this surrounded Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's is a disease that you've probably heard of once or twice, or maybe a lot more than that. So it's the most common form of dementia in the world, and every 50 seconds, one person is diagnosed with this disease. And it's been around for 
for such a long time, but it's currently unstoppable and many people die from it every year. I decided to do some research in it because I was honestly quite interested. And here's what's supposed to happen in your normal cells. You're supposed to have APP, amyloid precursor protein, and this helps neuronal, neuronal growth and repair. And alpha-secretase and gamma-secretase are the two enzymes that cleave APP or cut APP to allow it to exist as a soluble compound, which means it's dissolvable in your cell. However, what happens in Alzheimer's is that instead of alpha-secretase and gamma-secretase cutting, beta-secretase begins to cut. And this is really harmful because instead of your soluble compound, you get an unsoluble um, amyloid. And this amyloid beta forms together to form amyloid beta plaques, which gets in your neurons, gets in your synapses, and slows down your cells, eventually causing apoptosis, programmed cell death, which can spread to the entire brain, eventually causing you to die of Alzheimer's. So there have been many researchers around the world trying to inhibit beta secretase from cutting, inhibit base one, which is the cutter, and no, base one, which is the gene to allow beta secretase to cut. However, no one has actually tried to remove beta secretase's gene as a whole with CRISPR-Cas9, which is something that I'm specifically interested in. Because with this new technology, I feel like there are new innovations that can be made in this field that has somewhat remained stagnant over a long period of time. So I think that with CRISPR-Cas9 and with potentially a mentor to help me work on this project, we can solve a problem that has been around for a while. Thank you.